What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. And this episode, I'm going to strictly be talking about something that, you know, it's coming from a lot of the comments that I see on this channel. A lot of the comments I also see in just like Bulls Nation in general. And that's this thought of trading Kobe White. And I know this is probably going to be the video where more people disagree with me than not. I can't wait to, to just see the response to it. And have the conversation. That, that's what this whole platform is about, is having conversations about the team that we love the most, and that's the Chicago Bulls. Now, there seems to be this thought through many Bulls fans' um, eyes that the key to adding our front court depth is by trading Kobe White. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly for a few different reasons. And actually, seeing the preseason game from the other day, more so in my mind, solidified why the Bulls do not need to trade Kobe White to add front court debt. And that's not to say that they won't. Again, I know we don't know what's in the mind of the front office, but I personally think the Bulls at this stage would be crazy to trade Kobe White for a defensive big. And there's a few different reasons. For the, the main one prevailing isn't even necessarily just about Kobe White. I do think that it's easier during the season, whether it be through a, another minor trade uh, through the waiver wire uh, later on in the season, I think it's easier to add a defensive focused big man um, than it is to add a player that has the potential, the scoring potential of a Kobe White. Yes, it is up to him to hit that potential. And yes, potential usually does make players a better trade candidate as well. So I kind of understand this is not one of the things where I think anybody's necessarily wrong for thinking that the Bulls will trade Kobe White. I just don't agree with it. I don't think that that's what they're going to do. And the reason why I say the preseason game from the other day more so solidified in my mind why we should keep Kobe White is a couple of reasons. First, when you look at what a what we did defensively, even with like starting a six four player in Javante Green at power forward, and the fact that his hustle what kept him like competitive against players much bigger than him, but on top of that. Patrick Williams is going to come back and take a lot of those minutes at the four. Patrick Williams is going to hold down that position at the four as long as he's healthy. When we have players like a Troy Brown Jr. who has and can play the four, um, Javante Green now showing that he can as well, and the Bulls may have gotten a stud in him and he can play out of position as well. We also know DeMar can play some four as well. I don't think, yes, I understand, maybe not the best defensively, um, outside of Patrick Williams, but and Troy Brown Jr. Is a, is a solid defensive player as well. I do. I don't think. And, you know, of course, this this will go over the course of the season and we'll see what we need. Yes. On paper right now, it looks like we need more size and more depth. But if that's not the, the, the style that the Bulls are going to play, we may not need that. But the second reason why I do think that the Bulls are, are would be crazy for trading Kobe White is when you look at a player like Matt Thomas and what he did in that in that uh, opening preseason game. And the shots that he was that he was getting. Kobe White is projected to probably get those minutes like right as long as he's healthy, as long as he's playing consistent, he will absolutely play. He is a better player than Matt Thomas and he's a better shooter. And when you look at those shots that he took. Those are shots that we expect Kobe to be able to make. And the difference is, is the again, that potential. Yes, Matt Thomas looks to be a great shooter and I'm glad to have him on this team. But when you look at like. The ability that Matt Tom, I'm sorry, that uh, Kobe White has to get hot and to stay hot and how that is transformative for a team on offense. I just. I think Kobe White being in that position like this team is tailor, not tailor made for Kobe White, but it's set up in a way that is going that it should be able to hide a lot of the shortcomings of Kobe White. Specifically, ball handling, we have so many ball handlers now. And look at what Caruso was able to do. A uh, uh, backup backcourt with having Caruso and Kobe White out there. Come on, man. Listen, I, I just, the, the basketball sense of it. And I get why, and like looking at a lot of the comments, and I've really taken some time to like think and, and look at a lot of the comments that we've had on this YouTube channel um, that have talked about why to trade Kobe. He's a defensive liability. He's this, he's XYZ. First of all, Go back and look. Kobe White has, is always active on defense. Yes, he gets caught out of position sometimes. Yes, his defensive awareness isn't always the best. But I think that the, the thing that we sometimes forget about when it comes to defense is, yes, one-on-one -on -one defense is absolutely a thing. And you have lockdown defenders. 
But there's also this thing called team defense. And if you play in the scheme, it can stay active. And Kobe, I expect to be able to do that to a degree. I'm not saying, I'm never going to say Kobe White's going to be a lockdown defender. I don't know if he'll ever develop that part of his game, but to be an active defender, when you look at the things, at the things that a uh, player like DeMar, DeMar DeRozan is a great example of why a player like Kobe White, if they can score and be smart offensively, can be productive in this league, even if you aren't the best defensive player. Like the knock on DeMar DeRozan has always been his defense, but it's never stopped him from being a productive and contributing to a team winning. But outside of that, look at what Zach and DeMar did in that preseason game. Go back and look at some of those defensive plays that they made just by being active, paying attention. And yes, we always know that Zach Levine always has that, that gauge to improve defensively. But the, for the people who just automatically think that trading Kobe White is the key to the bull, to unlocking the Bulls being this, this contender, I think are, are, sh are falling short in the sense that having a transformative a potential again this is this is kobe does have to hit this i'm not saying that he's prepared necessarily to do this now um yes in flashes he's sona but it's up to him to be to do it consistently but the thing that i that i am that i am saying is that the potential of what kobe white can be offensively off that bench is greater than anything that that, that of, of, of a need to trade him for a defensive big because again i think that defensive big can be found with uh, through other means and through other deals rather than trading a player who is still so young like a Kobe White and can, and has so much potential off offensively unless you're bringing in somebody who has the defensive potential to match Kobe White's offensive potential which is a rare case I I I just don't I don't think the Bulls should trade him and again I understand why so many of you think that I understand why you know he's he's young he's on a a very friendly deal. Um, and because of his potential, I understand that. But when you look at the piece that the Bulls need, even even in in what we think that we need to help shore up this front court, I don't think that that's worth the Kobe White. Like, I don't think it's worth trading Kobe White to get that. Again, I know that the comments are going to be filled with people disagreeing with me, and that's fine. I understand it. I understand that overall, you just want this team to improve. We're Bulls fans. We love this team. We want us to be in the best position to win. But I think, I personally think, if the Bulls are going to do what we think that they can do and what it looks like they're, they're thinking they can do and they're aiming to do, having a player like Kobe White with that scoring potential off the bench is, a, is more of a net positive than trading that potential away for just a defensive focus bit. Now, if he's included in the deal to bring in a much better player, okay, I can understand that you have to give up somebody of Kobe White's potential to do that. But again, we've talked about the Bulls as far as like bringing in, if the, if the, you're, I know the, the comment for a long time was Ben Simmons, that deal is not happening because of who we'd have to give up just to make salaries work. But if the Bulls get some potential star and throw in Kobe White, hell, at any point, at that point, whoever they need to throw in, as long as not one of the, 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 the big pieces of our core, do so. But I just, I believe in the potential of Kobe White. And I think Kobe White, like the games that we've seen him get hot in, imagine that in a playoff series, right? Imagine a team in a playoff series having to defend Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan, Vooch, and Patrick Williams, like in what they, it looks like this team's going to be able to do with passing the ball and just ball movement in general. But then when Zach Levine comes off the court, when Lonzo Ball comes off the court, you have a player who is amazing defensively and is showing so many flashes offensively in Alex Caruso. But then you also have Kobe White, whose ability to play off the ball, come off screens, and shoot lights out when he gets hot. I, just, I, just, I, I, just, I don't see the Bulls trading that potential. But let me know down below. I already know. The comments are probably going to be crazy with this one. I welcome it. I just want to know how you guys feel. Again, a short video here today. Um, now that the preseason is going, you'll be seeing me more often. Like I said, I never will commit to doing an episode daily, but you'll be getting me more times than not during the week. Um, and it's just it's an exciting time to be a Bulls fan. And that's just something that was on my mind. And also, like like I said, uh, you know, uh, the other point in this is that thinking that maybe we don't have what we already need. And that's because of our play style, because of the Bulls and what and the way that they want to play. 
I don't know if, if us needing a 6'10 defense, I don't I don't know if we need another one of those. We have Bradley, um, like I said, Troy Brown Jr. I expect Javante Green so showed so much. And then still, I, I, DJ can play some minutes at the four. So like what this team showed in, in, in the preseason game so far, just really, really has that stuff on my mind. We'll see how it goes. It, it could, the next preseason game, all this stuff that I said about us not needing uh, another defensive big may go completely out the window, and we'll see how it progresses over the course of the season. But that's what's on my mind right now. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you so much for all the support you guys have been giving me in the month and a half I've been having this channel, so I appreciate you guys so much. And for anyone, like, click the link below. Subscribe to the podcast as well. Help a brother out. Uh, but like I like to end every episode on Go Bulls. I love you guys. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media. Media.